All right, Fury Chisora 3 is around the corner, so today we have boxers this time and their fragrances on GQ's hit YouTube series, 10 Things I Can't Live Without. Got lots to react to here, so I can't wait to get into it. Now roll intro, roll video. This cologne right here, this top of the line cologne right here. This is Mason Francis Crajon Paris. Here we have the currently undefeated unified welterweight champion of the world, the Truth Errol Spence Jr. with his 70 ml Maison Francis Kirchon Gentle Fluidity Silver Edition. And firstly, I love how he actually said the brand aloud, which is again Maison Francis Kirchon. But of course, many users don't want to take a stab at it, and that's okay too. But in case you are unfamiliar with Maison Francis Kirchon, Francis Kirchon, the man himself, is the one who is most known for making a fragrance called La Mal by Jean Paul Gaultier way back in the 90s. He's gone to do a bunch of other classic scents since for various other brands, most of which are very pleasant. And yeah, he's kind of a staple in this community, in this industry. He's awesome. But more recently in his career, he's been more known for his niche brand, Maison Francis Kirchon, which has since been picked up by LVMH. And of course, that brand is no different with all these other pleasant releases as well. And this one, especially in Gentle Fluid and the Silver Edition, is especially awesome. It was released separately, but alongside Gentle Fluid and the Gold back in 2019. And the gimmick is that they each use the same exact ingredients to do different things. The ingredients are juniper berries, nutmeg, coriander, musks, amberwood, and vanilla. So in gold, we're talking a very warm, very enveloping, yet soft feeling vanilla musk with those notes more accentuated. And here in silver, it's much more fresh, fresh, spicy, and aromatic, and I love it. It's a very chilled out gin and tonic kind of vibe. I typically prefer that cool feeling scent profile, and yeah, I just think it's stunning here. And this is, I think every man should have cologne, especially, you know, on them because for one, women love cologne. <laughs> Yeah, Spence is right about the women part for sure. They love wearing fragrance themselves, they love smelling it off of us, and as men, we love wearing fragrance for ourselves and for them too. So being pro fragrance for the win. I'm a collector of cologne, I love cologne, and um, you know, it just make you smell good. If you smell good, you feel good, so. This is my top cologne right here. And that's the thing, I definitely feel super good too with Gentle Fluid the Silver, as it is definitely still on my wish list. And if my man is a collector, I'm definitely interested in seeing what his other high quality pieces are, if he has something like this already. What's your application technique? Do you get the wrist and the neck, or do you spray it? <laughs> uh, it just depends. Sometimes I may spray it on my hand and just do like this. <laughs> Arrow, arrow, arrow. While that is still more optimal than spraying it into the air and walking into it while it is already dissipating, unless you have a splash bottle or a vial of fragrance oil, the whole point of you having an atomizer is to be able to evenly spray it onto something that you're targeting. And since the fragrance's oil is mixed with alcohol, that's meant to actually help lift off of your skin. So as those fragrance molecules are evaporating all around you, that's how you project the scent, thus leaving you a nice scent trail as you go. So again, give yourself a nice even in spray or sprays with whichever fragrance you want to reach for today, unlike this. Oh, I'm always spraying my neck. I'm always spraying my neck. But usually I hit it on my hand and I just, <laughs> I roll what I love with my body. So, uh, you know, it's a little bit, you know, a lot of people don't do that, but I do it. I mean, it works. So, you know, I do whatever works. All right, Spence, that thing that you said about you spraying on your neck sometimes, continue to do that. Mainly do that on any part of you that you want this fragrance or any other fragrance on. Again, it's not like the hands don't work, it's just not as optimal. And you still do waste a lot of it on your hands, which is especially problematic if you wear this stuff and don't have dude's money because this thing's not cheap. So if you want to smell like Errol Spence Jr. here, a 70 ml Maison Francis Kirkjohn Gentle Fluidity Silver Edition will run you a healthy 235 US dollars with unfortunately little to no chance of finding it marked down on the gray market. But yeah, great stuff to the champ here. It's gonna be a little crazy if I open the, the bag, but uh, I have money, I have perfume, Tom Ford. Is it the little one? Next up, we have the undisputed super middleweight champion of the world, Saul Canelo Alvarez. That smart man, because for a bag like this, which could easily jumble up more fragile, bigger glass pieces quite dangerously, my man instead has a Tom Ford travel size fragrance sprayer. To what's inside that sprayer, I have no idea. My wife gave it to me, so I needed to, to carry 
because if not, she's gonna be mad. Now, if you watch the entire clip, he's actually describing his bag more here. So gentlemen, if your significant other gets you something, definitely put it to good use. Happy wife, happy life after all. But I do wish that we knew which Tom Ford fragrance Canelo has there is. And given the roster of Tom Ford, as far as the more affordable signature line or the private blend line, since Canelo is absolutely balling, I'm going to presume that he actually has a private blend here. And actually, I wanna throw this over to you. Which Tom Ford private blend fragrance do you think suits Canelo Alvarez most or what do you think that one is? That's if you know anything about dude, just tell me in the comments below. If I had to take a stab at it, I would probably say Tobacco Vanille. Sure, tobacco and vanilla are very central to this fragrance, but other notes like dried fruits and spices are also very apparent there too. One of those notable spices to me is cinnamon and since Canelo is Spanish for cinnamon, that's why I'd pick Tobacco Vanille. Might not be a great reason, but hey, it is what it is. My next essential is aftershave. Cologne, whatever you wanna call it. I never go anywhere without aftershave. Next up, we have the lineal heavyweight champion of the world, the still undefeated Gypsy King, Tyson Fury. And with him is his 50ml Clive Christian 8 Rococo Immortel. Now I will unpack the Clive in just a bit, but I kind of want to nip something in the bud. And this truly may need unpacking for you depending on where you live. But you'll notice that male casual fragrance users will say aftershave in the UK and cologne in North America. And the reason why we each respectively use these terms is likely a generalization from a fragrance item from way long ago. So for North Americans, that would have been an eau de cologne concentrated fragrance. I guess it was just easy for us to colloquially call it the concentration that it was. However, now I would say the most dominant concentration for men at least is eau de toilette. And that's probably the case around the world. But you probably also know why we aren't using the word toilette or toilet to describe something that we want to smell good in. And then on the other hand, for people in the UK saying aftershave, aftershave is of course not actually a perfume concentration like eau de toilette or eau de cologne are, but rather they're saying it because it's a generalization of actual aftershave, which I feel like is a little bit more antiquated nowadays amongst young men. But in case you still don't know what it is, it is an alcohol-based liquid agent that you'd put on your skin after shaving to both soothe and disinfect the skin. And since actual aftershaves were often scented, I guess this is why this term also caught on for things that were just simply fragrance. So I hope this cleared the air for anyone who was in the dark when it came to the origins of either generalized word. And I guess this is why many fragrance enthusiasts are also hellbent on calling them fragrances because that's a more appropriate umbrella term because it encapsulates anything regardless of concentration if it is a fragrance per se. But hey, if someone calls something aftershave or cologne and you don't like that because you'd rather them say fragrance or the term that is most dominant where you're at, I don't know what to say to you. Don't don't be a snob. At the end of the day, that person is still cooler for wearing some sort of scent than someone who is staunchly against it. So yeah, I don't know. I just wouldn't pull up on that person that hard. And hell, imagine doing that to a 6'9 heavyweight champion of the world who can knock your candy ass out. Probably not a good idea. I have to smell like a million bucks. This is uh, Clive Christian Rocco. I mean, the Gypsy King is a flashy dude, so of course he wants his fragrances to also reflect that same level of ostentatiousness. As a result, I'm not shocked that he wears a Clive Christian. And in case you don't know of Clive Christian, for decades he has been one of the world's foremost interior designers, most known for his designer kitchens. He then bought the Crown Perfumery Company back in 1999, which was once a great company but had fallen on hard times, a far cry from being Queen Victoria's perfumery of choice over a century ago. So Christian started working hard, releasing fragrances under his own name there, and the products have been really well received. Really pricey, but yes, really well received. Definitely worthy of the praise he also gets in the interior design world. And speaking of this one in Rococo Immortel, it is a male fragrance released separately and alongside the female Rococo Magnolia, both of which are based on the Rococo art periods of the 18th century. The Immortel one here is my preference, and in case you don't know of the note of Immortel, it is an herbal aromatic note with a little bit of a sweetness in the background to it. It's almost like a caramel or honey quality and I think it's quite unique. And for this fragrance specifically, I think it's actually really necessary in the mid because otherwise it would feel like a more rugged, regular masculine fragrance. Albeit with an equally interesting note in Papyrus. But yeah, Immortel is definitely the main event here, for sure. It's a good one. It smells nice. It lasts for ages. Gives me a bit of a headache though. Now it is a strong scent, don't get me wrong, but I'd say that the performance, say if you spray it on your neck, is closer to a respectable 10 to 12 hours in my cooler Canadian conditions. Projection wise, it's at most medium, but just 
maybe above an arm's length. So to me, that's plenty, but come on, champ. I know you didn't mention your spray routine, but if it's giving you a headache, maybe spray even less, perhaps. Many people give me compliments on that aftershave. It's one of those attractive, sexy ones. And hey, I can't front. I also have those kind of scents, weirdly enough. It's usually not how fragrance works. You know, having ones that are easy to spray too much of because they feel like they're smacking you in the face too much in your personal space. But when it comes to whoever you walk across or come across, they'll actually feel like it's not too invasive and I think that's great. And I guess that's cool that the champ gets that vibe. He's getting them compliments on it. And if you too potentially want the same feeling, a 50ml Clive Christian 8 Rococo Immortel currently retails for a thick 550 US dollars, so super pricey. But believe it or not, this Clive is also currently being marked down for just under 250 US dollars on the gray market. How long will that last? Who knows? But if you're remotely interested in this scent and that rate, try this ASAP wherever you can. Run, don't walk. Cologne is definitely essential for me because um, you gotta smell good always. I don't really like to like wear like a lot of the same cologne. I like to switch it up, like not like always the same smell. So this is one of my newest. It's bond number nine, but this is actually one of my favorites, Centel 33. And finally, here we have the undisputed lightweight champion of the world and still undefeated, the dream Devin Haney, with his 100ml Bond No. 9 Greenwich Village and 30ml Lalabo Santal 33 perfume oil. Greenwich Village being a more recent Bond scent that often gets compared to Baccarat Rouge 540 by Maison Francis Kirchen. And while it isn't an outright clone trying to use the same ingredients to do the same things verbatim, it instead uses different notes to accomplish some of the same things, but in a more overtly trademark synthetic Bond kind of way. So here we got the Bond fruitiness, starting off with that lychee right off the bat. Very juicy, very uplifting. If you like sweet and fruity, you'll definitely like this opening here. And it is complemented really well with the peony. You know, a pretty fresh floral giving it some dimension on top of that sweetness. So I think those notes in the opening play really well together. And when this stuff begins to dry down, you got this more conventional compliment getting effect in the air. Just straight up Ambroxan, and you know, that's obviously going to get compliments. And while I am sometimes hard on Bond for being too derivative, I do really actually like this and this is how you truly interpret something familiar more uniquely or in a way that is more specific to your brand. Now I normally do the spray but I recently found the, um, the oil and the oil just lasts longer. All right, pretty interesting. So Devin is a little bit of a frag head like us if he is experimenting with different application methods. Firstly, Santal 33, we all know how well it performs in the Eau de Parfum form, as we have discussed it on the series like a good half dozen times. It is a more subversive, grittier take on a typically smoother, creamier note in sandalwood with projection to boot. But like I mentioned with Errol Spence Jr. earlier, that's what spraying in more alcohol-based concentrations does, versus this time here with Devin Devin Haney Santal 33 perfume oil, we are talking mainly the oil, so way less alcohol with a more modest scent cloud because there's less alcohol to help evaporate and lift the scent off of you. So instead your scent is more for your own pleasure or who gets in close. And typically speaking, if you need this broken down now and in any other case that you see upcoming perfume oils versus eau de parfum versions of a scent, just know that more alcohol based equals more emphasis on projection rather than longevity and perfume oils are rather modest projecting but they might last even longer because you could just feel like they're sitting on your skin the whole time and therefore are also sometimes messier to deal with but yeah this is also not to say that perfume oils can't project it really depends on your body your conditions the strength of the ingredients in that oil to begin with but in the case of Santal 33 I'll presume that oil is hella strong of course I like this around like the nighttime it's like more like a nighttime for me it's more like a daytime like smelling fresh and you know, getting my day started, going to go work out. Okay, this is where I personally disagree, but no one is right or wrong here as we perceive fragrance differently in our own kind of ways. Like I wouldn't personally wear uh, Santal 33, in my opinion, a more rugged scent to a workout. Instead, I would probably wear a way lighter scent, a way fresher scent to a workout, while I'd wear Santal 33 for any other time that isn't a workout or something that I'm gonna sweat super heavy in. While Greenwich Village, although something I still wouldn't work out in, to me is still a brighter scent and hence I would rather wear it during the daytime, on a lunch date or something like that. But yes, I guess I could see Devin Haney here 
placing a lot of emotional emphasis on a set like Greenwich Village because it must be a compliment magnet for him as it is for a lot of people who wear it. So therefore it might feel more special and then he wants to save those for his most exalted occasions at night. I wear cologne pretty much every day, but I got this thing that a lot of people don't know. But when, on the days that I have like sparring, sparring days, I don't wear cologne. Like, I don't know, it's just like, a, I wouldn't say superstitious because I don't really believe in that, but I don't wear any cologne in the ring. I get this, I guess this is part of Devin Haney's all business approach. Seriously, this man is so surgical in the ring and not typically exciting for the casual viewer. So I can see how a shrewd operator like him, albeit a fragrance enthusiast, wouldn't wear any scent while he is earning his checks by teeing off on people in the arenas or even sparring. So it's not necessarily a right or wrong approach, but I love how Devin Haney opined on just about everything. And because of that, he is this video's MVP. And if you also want to smell like dude, a 30 ml perfume oil vial of Lalabo Santo 33 will run you 158 US dollars, of course, with no gray market action. And if it is a 100 ml bond number nine Greenwich Village you want, that will be a tall 460 US dollars. And yes, I know that is a super inflated bond rate, as all bonds are, but thankfully you can get this one for over $150 off on the gray market sites right now. So just like the Clive earlier, that's an amazing deal. Don't walk, run. There it is yet again. Thank you for sticking around this long. Hope you enjoyed the show. What do you think though? Who is your MVP? Or do you got a favorite boxer here and or fragrance? Please let me know in the comments below. And while you're at it, if you follow the sport remotely, also tell me who you got in the upcoming Tyson Fury, Derek Chisora fight. I'd love to know. Also subscribe and hit the notification bell if you've yet to. If you wanna climb aboard the train to 30,000 subscribers, we'd love to have you. And until the next time, thanks again for watching. Take care for now. Peace out. Bye. My name is Manny. Wear your fragrances.